and engineering, and science. Finding ability to think in both deductive terms and abductive terms, generating new ideas. Corporalita means that to be inventors, to be creators, we have to be in good shape. In fact, there is much more behind it. It says basically that we have to keep a balance of our mind, of our body, and our spirit. So it is about finding this precious sweet point in which we are able to be really, uh, really effective. And finally, connection means that we, we are living in a very complex world, and this world has to be understood in its complexity, as it is understood in system sciences or in cybernetics. So how to achieve a state in which our engineers will be able to use all these principles in their everyday activities, will be creative and unrestricted by traditional deductive thinking. Well, we have to educate them. One of principles of successful, uh, successful intelligence is that you can teach successful intelligence. You can teach separately practical intelligence, uh, analytical intelligence, and creative intelligence. In fact, you need to create a proper balance of these three types of uh, intelligence. How to do this? Well, I had a number of suggestions. Of course, one of them is traditional engineering courses, and I teach here at GMU an undergraduate course on design and inventive engineering, and graduate course on uh, design and inventive engineering. And these courses are intended to share with students at least some knowledge about engineering creativity and how to be more creative. But offering courses isn't enough. Uh, if we come back to the concept of, um, of the Natichi effect, we we'll, uh, realize that it isn't only about providing knowledge. We have to develop an entirely different state of our mind. And to do this, we should use, in my mind, a very complex approach, create appropriate ambience. So if we leave this poster here and then another one here, this is so-called mind mapping for ambience in engineering education. Mind mapping, as a matter of fact, is a technique which was originated by Leonardo da Vinci and it allows both systematic analysis and creative thinking. And of course we don't have seven hours and 20 minutes which are required to talk about all these details, and of course it isn't my, uh, my intention. I simply would like to say that to educate creative engineers, we have to create, we have to design creative environment. Environment in which we will have all kinds of pieces put together, create not only uh, nice interiors, but proper buildings, proper space, proper music, colors, etc, etc, etc. This is a very complex process which of course only increases probability of educating creative engineers. It is a probabilistic process but any improvement of course is very, uh, very important in this context. And talking about environment, I'd like to show you our own example from Fairfax. As you know, Fairfax created a new downtown and this is a drawing of our new downtown which is intended to create a new social dynamics social dynamics in this sense that people are coming from different ways of life they interact they enjoy their time together and of course a new urban quality is created okay it's working for me so I propose also building engineering villages which will be based on the principles of modern urban design and intended to recreate the Medici effect on a larger scale. And here we have a good example of an engineering building, uh, engineering village with a building for inventors, so-called inventors heaven, another building for uh, all kinds of computer labs, and of course all kinds of testing labs because of course touching uh, things, uh, working on things is very important 
Unfortunately, here at George Mason in our School of Engineering, in our civil engineering department, we don't have even a single testing machine, and it isn't so good for our students. So this is a general overview of my book. I base it on a theory of successful intelligence. I went back to the Medici effect and to Renaissance, and I proposed how to translate all these general uh, Da Vinci's principles into the practice of engineering education. And finally, I proposed creation of engineering villages and the totally different, of course, dynamics for dealing with engineering education. I understand that my time is more or less up. If there are questions or comments, I'll be more than happy uh, to answer. If anybody is interested in my book, I'll be more than happy to sign it. And if there are questions right now. Yes. yes. Um, do you have any comments on you know, the, the pushback that comes about every time there's a new engineering, like area of engineering that pops up? Like say at George Mason you have, like I myself am a systems engineering uh -huh. student, and you know, I've learned the traditional mathematics that an engineer learns and you know, control systems and mechanical systems, and then what, what when, somebody learns about systems engineering, it's like, well, that's not really engineering because it doesn't fit into electrical or mechanical. It doesn't fit. So what, is there any like comment on that? Um, I like the emergence of systems engineering. And in my opinion, all students should take at least one or two, if not more, systems of systems engineering courses because they provide abstract thinking, which is absolutely necessary if you want to be a creative person. But you touched a very sensitive issue. We are living in a political world and we are, as engineering educators, under tremendous, um, a tremendous um, a impact of politicians, administrations, etc. And for political reasons, all universities want to minimize requirements to graduate students, to reduce the time necessary to graduate, to reduce money necessary to graduate the student, and at the same time new areas emerge, and we we'll have to learn more and more even within our domain. So we have here a contradiction. Uh, linear quantitative changes aren't sufficient. We have to start thinking out of the box to break existing pattern. How to do this? Well, I have a number of specific ideas we can talk about it. Later. It requires definitely bold, bold decisions and realizing that we aren't graduating students simply to get money for them, but we are graduating students to contribute to our society. So the students who will graduate will be well prepared for actual uh, real life, not only diplomas. Because as you know, you can buy a diploma on internet for $100 or $200, but that means nothing. Ultimate success of our profession is if we graduate successful engineers or not. Successful, that means uh, able to produce inventions, to become leaders, uh, and of course able to do traditional engineering. Okay. Thank you so much.